love my channel and would like to show your support, please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Oshanka Show. For as little as one dollar, you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life in Soviet Union. Hello comrades and welcome back to Shanka show. Today I'm gonna make another video about Soviet childhood. But the most thing we're looking for in a construction sites was calcium carbide. But those were kind of like innocent way of playing with calcium carbide. The real fun, but it was really dangerous fun, is to find empty glass bottle and at that time we didn't have plastic bottles at all. Like in Soviet Union, all the drinks were sold in glass bottles, starting with vodka, beer, uh, any uh, soda, you know, everything was sold in glass bottles. So we had plenty of those. And the best bottles, of course, will be bottles from champagne because they made of really thick glass. So the explosions will be the best out of the champagne uh, bottles. So you, you have an empty bottle, uh, you fill it with water, then you uh, drop uh, uh, calcium carbide rocks in there too, so that starts creating a reaction. Then you need to plug that bottle as tight as you can, um, and then you set it up and run away as fast as you can. And all you do is wait, because with the pressure building up, it will build enough or that the, your cork will uh, fly out with the loud popping noise, or what you're li really looking for is the loud, loud explosion when the pressure just uh, tears the bottle up in pieces and those uh, shrapnels of glass flying all over the place. It's a really loud explosion and a really dangerous thing because the glass shards will be flying in all directions. And I remember one time we were doing this and you know, when you was a little kid, I mean, I was 10, 11, you don't realize how dangerous that stuff and as most people, you kind of always feel safe about yourself. You know, it's like bad things happen only to other people. You kind of like being protected maybe. So you just participate in this thing without realizing how dangerous the whole thing are. So one time we set up the bottle, you know, got it all going, uh, plugged it in and we're standing waiting a minute, two minutes and nothing happens. Uh, so usually that's a sign that the plug that you, you know, you put the bottle in the top of the bottle is just leaking so it can't create enough pressure so then you just go back to the bottle which is a really dumb thing to do and it's one time we just walked right back to the bottle look staying around it's like yep nothing happening so one of the guys grabbed the bottle and he just tossed it into the wall not far from us and that thing exploded so loud with this bright flash and uh, fortunately there was no uh, glass charge flying our way, but we left this big giant black mark on that wall. And then for years, every time I walked by it, I was like, oh man, that was us who did it because, you know, there was just a wall of the building and now had this big black uh, spot from that explosion that we did. But fortunately, no one got hurt that time. Another time, I was lucky because I was already in the hospital. Um, I think I had my knee surgery that time. I don't remember what the reason, but it was one of the time when I was actually in the hospital and my mom came and she told us, you know, told me the story, news uh, about my friends. And she said, oh my God, I hope you're not playing with those kids uh, that explode the bottles because um, a couple of days ago, uh, they were exploding the bottle using car uh, calcium carbide and it bottle wasn't going off. So they walked towards it and right when they approached the bottle, it went off. So it blew up and by just plain miracle, the kids were staying right next to it. No one got hurt, but a couple kids who stood kind of, they stayed back. One had a piece of uh, glass jammed right above his eye into his eyebrow. And another guy, a chunk of glass, uh, uh, kind of sliced his ear. And I was like, Oh, because I was kind of usually a chicken, so I was stood back, so I was like, oh my god, I could be right one of those guys staying in the back and getting hurt really bad. So that time, uh, some people got hurt, but fortunately, no one uh, lost their eye, but I bet you, uh, if there'll be some statistics about the Soviet kids at that time, there were probably thousands of kids that got hurt really bad, uh, losing fingers, uh, losing eyes, because 
those flying glass that can do some real damage. Another time uh, we were exploding bottles again same way in the village but uh, we didn't have a, car a car calcium carbide. There was actually other way to make uh, bottles explode. It's called Silitra and I'm not sure how to translate it to English but you buy some household chemicals and you mix them up uh, and then that liquid you need to uh, put newspaper uh, into this liquid soak it up and then dry it and then uh, that newspaper would become kind of crunchy and if you lit it on fire it creates a lot of smoke so same idea uh, you jam bottle full of that silitra paper you lit it on fire then you plug the bottle so that burning um, creates a lot of pressure and makes the bottle explode uh, so we were kind of careful we had a pallet a wooden pallet so we set up the bottle and then we hid behind the pallet, waited for explosion. It exploded beautifully, very loudly. And then we, uh, we heard the chunks of glass, you know, hitting like bullets our pallet. Then we waited a little bit more like, okay, we're clear. We got up and started walking towards the uh, site uh, where the bottle used to be. And suddenly one of my friends screamed and fell on the ground and uh, holding his face. And to my horror, I saw the blood, you know, pouring through his fingers when we finally uh, made you know made him take his hands away from his face uh, we saw to our horror that he had a big deep gouge right on his the top of his nose and what happened I still can't believe it happened but actual bottom of the bottle went straight up in the air so somehow that explosion made the bottom of the bottle go straight up in the air it arced so while the rest of the glass shards flew you know horizontally left and right that bottle uh, piece of uh, glass went straight up and on the way down it hit my friend on his nose bridge and for the rest of his life he had a pretty deep gouge i mean he didn't get hurt really bad but it was very scary at that moment because we couldn't understand what's going on because we waited for the glass to uh, you know flying glass to stop and then suddenly there was one more piece just waiting for its victim so that was really scary experience and of course uh, we did a lot of explosive devices using just regular matches uh, soviet matches uh, if you watch my video about things you could purchase for one copic for one soviet cent uh, a box of matches which had a hundred matches was only one copic and, and it was always like that the price never changed we even had a, like a, one of the soviet jokes was hey did you hear the news that matches got cheaper and you know it's kind of funny because it's already one penny you know one copic it can't get any cheaper than that uh, but of course you know it's, it was made out of wood so we will uh, use the knife and scrape uh, the flammable parts and then you find again container and fill it up with its uh, uh, with the tops of the matches and then you do all kind of explosive devices using that uh, for example you can find uh, empty cases from like uh, hunters that you know they did the buck shots and then you find an empty uh, shell you f uh, stuff it full with the heads of the matches and then you hammer it carefully shot and you set it up on a little fire and then you explode it, explode it and it's a lot of fun. Another uh, popular entertainment that Soviet kids did was so-called Dimovucha, smoke bomb. Uh, we usually used uh, pin, pole, uh, pin, uh, pin pong balls, here you go. So the, those plastic white balls that you use for ping pong for table tennis. Uh, apparently that plastic is creates a lot of smoke while it's you set it on fire uh, there were some other things that could do that but uh, the easiest was to find you know you, you break a uh, pin pole ball in tiny pieces and then you have a foil that you kind of put those pieces of plastic in there and then you make a little uh, looks like onion so it's all it's a ball with the plastic inside and then you have a little hole so it does look like an onion so you can have a, your match in there and then you lit that plastic 
and you toss that uh, smoke bomb somewhere, like uh, you don't want to do it in someone's apartment, and it creates a lot of smoke. So the mawuhi, that was a famous thing to do, you know, kids can make maybe 10, 20 of those, and then you walk around the neighborhood and you just kind of lit it on fire, and you see the little kids playing in the sandbox, you just have one of your smoke bombs going, you just toss it in the their sandbox and they all cry and running away and you just you run away too so you don't get in trouble with uh, parents of those kids and the most dangerous things that soviet kids did was to find some leftovers from the world war ii yes. since you know ukraine where i lived was you know there was a wave first going east when the germany occupied all ukraine then there was the way of going back west when the Soviet Union, the Red Army came back and there was a lot of ammo being lost or buried or whatever all over the Ukraine and quite often, you know, you can't just find it uh, randomly but uh, I remember one time they started building a new school right next to my building and you know, so they excavated a giant hole for the basement and guess what? They you know, found bunch of ammo, just rusty, you know, machine guns, bullets, and whatever. And of course, kids found it first because you know they dug it, and excavators left, and lay, they left giant piles of sand. And then some kids were walking by, like, "Oh, what are those things?" And next thing, it was the, it was like maybe close to a hundred kids from all the buildings around. They all gathered there, you know, digging the sand and recovering the. Uh, ammunition until some parents got wind of it called the cops you know those called the military personnel and they kind of surrounded the area and kicked all the kids out and they just cleaned it all up and uh, recovered all the ammunition but if kids find a grenade or bullets i mean that's the things that you can explode really loud and you can get hurt and you get killed so quite a few kids uh, died from um, putting you know like grenades and stuff like that in the fire or if they even find a big shell from like cannon so that was where the worst case scenarios so this is my story about dangerous games that soviet kids used to play and i used to play as i said i'm so thankful that my childhood was so much fun and despite the fact i did so many dangerous stupid things i still have all my fingers um and as i said i feel bad for my kids watching how they just bored out of their mind and you know you're trying to kind of keep them busy but you have to work you have to mow grass and other things so and they just entertain themselves with electronics you know having a hard time taking it away and make them read the book or something but definitely i could tell that uh, my childhood was a lot of dangerous fun well i hope you enjoyed the show and as always don't forget uh, to put the like for this video share with your friends and we'll talk to you soon до свидания. Goodbye.